Yeah. Um, <laughs> just give you a very quick in, in brief introduction about uh, Huawei as a company. Uh, Huawei was est established in 1987, uh, not very long time ago. It's a quite young company uh, founded in, in Shenzhen as a private company uh, from 1987. And now we are the world leading ICT solution provider in the telecommunication sector. And also, uh, regarding the size of the business, uh, the staff number, so far we have 150,000 employees uh, in global, in more than 140 countries. And in which there are 17,000 staff working in the research and the development. So we call it the world largest uh, R&D force in the IT industry. Last year, we achieved 35.3 billion US dollars in revenue. So this is, a, uh, as your Lam mentioned, is the world largest uh, uh, telco supplier uh, in the industry. And also we working with the majority of the leading operators in the, in the industry. So by our uh, calculation is uh, 45 of top 50. So in which another five probably almost of them uh, based in America. So we still have very small business operation in America. Uh, and and uh, so far Huawei services have already covered one third of the world population. So even we don't do the consumer business, the Huawei solutions through the broadband, fixed broadband, mobile broadband, which covered one third of the uh, world uh, population. And the, for business, we have three business areas. One is what we call the carrier business, uh, which means the, the telecommunication operators like uh, British Telecom, Vodafone, O2, these are uh, telecommunication operators. This is our major business and also our very traditional business. We sell the solution to these operators. The second part is relatively new business. We started this business from 2011. We call it the enterprise business, which means that we sell the solution to the large corporate, to the, like the, the banks, the companies, the government, and the universities, because these organizations have their own ICT infrastructure. So we provide a solution to these organizations. The third one we, the, we call it con consumer business. Uh, this we will all focus on the personal device, like the mobile phones and the mobile dongles and the home device, like uh, the broadband modem in your home and the set box in your home. This is more focused on the consumer uh, business. So we have three business areas which cover the end-to-end -end solution in the telco and the ICT area. Regarding our global uh, presence, so from this chart, you can see uh, Huawei, now we, we have 14 regional uh, co headquarters, and which cover one, more than 140 countries. And uh, a number, uh, I didn't change it enough, is actually 150,000 staff working more than 140 countries. And in the chart, you can see we have the globalized uh, centers, different centers. For example, the research and the development center in more than 20 countries. And the logistic center, we call it the supply center, so which we ship our equipment to different countries. So we have this center in the global base. And also we have the manufacturer centers, and also we have the data centers, we have the uh, finance centers, which not just in China, it's located in different uh, regions. This is the, our global presence and the car war, our global business. Let me tell you the story about the Huawei, so from the beginning. Uh, I will tell you three stages about the Huawei. So the first one will be 1987 to 1992. We call it the starting up. So from the very beginning, uh, what's the business environment, what's the challenge, what we have done to be 
uh, successful at that, that stage. So as you probably know, uh, in the later 1980s, so in China, the economic reformation is in the very important stage because China started to open the market to start the economic reformation from the earlier 1980s. And the central government set up the special economic zone in Shenzhen where Huawei founded. At that stage, in overall in China, the majority of the economy dominated by the state-owned companies. So the overall economy is state, the state-owned company controlled. And there are very few private companies which allowed to start in Shenzhen at that time. So Huawei is one of the company, is a private company, the five founders, so they have, uh, I, I, I think uh, from current number is $2,000, so they start Huawei business from 1987. And the first business they do is uh, to do the uh, PBX, the small uh, exchange switch. Uh, they resell the switch to the uh, some smaller offices, SMEs, and the rural area. So we sell is the distributor at that stage. But there was something happened because the, this company we call you can see the Hongnian, this company they stopped the contract with Huawei, stopped the reseller contract. So Huawei, the management stage, they start to to the independent research and development from 1990. So this is the first uh, time Huawei had uh, his own research capability. It's very small, but very important. And uh, in 1992, the first product Huawei designed and developed product we called HGD48 is uh, actually the 48 lines switch designed by Huawei is the first product. This is the uh, overall uh, environment at, this, at that moment. Regarding the Huawei at that stage, so the major market is not in the city, even not in the major rural area. It's very beginning in the very rural village and the very small uh, companies to use uh, small equipment. This is the beginning of the Huawei. So we start the business from the very rural area and we start to develop our own product uh, from the first stage. So this is uh, very important. But uh, why Huawei at that stage can be more successful than other companies? The one is the Huawei starts the R&D. Because lots of uh, communication companies at that stage, they only focus on the resale. They resell the uh, Western companies' product to China. And Huawei starts the, their own development. Another one is because the economic reformation and the uh, open market. So the communication requirement in China is very, very big, the huge requirement. So th this allows Huawei have more opportunity to sell the product to more companies. The second stage you can see is the very important stage for Huawei to grow the business. To grow the business. You can see some numbers. This stage, the telecommunication industry in China grew very rapidly. You can see some numbers. There are telecom, telephone subscribers grew 50.5 times from 11 million to 171 million. That's a very big growth. And for the mobile subscribers grew from 1,500 times from 170K to 85 million. So the market grows very rapidly. And the second one is the uh, free market uh, communication. So the technical market is the first sector the Chinese government opened that market. It's a fair communication between the companies which comes from different uh, area. Like you can see the, the most of the famous telecommunication pro providers, they were very active working in China, like the Lucent, uh, Ericsson, Motorola, NEC, Fujitsun, etc. They, they all very active in China market. And uh, also there are some Chinese vendors at that stage. So the top four will be 
we call the Great Dragon uh, Da Tang ZT and Huawei. So this is uh, Huawei uh, Chinese uh, independent research and development uh, companies in China to provide the telecommunication solutions. So the competition is open, but the competition very strong, was very strong at the stage. I can tell you some numbers. In, at that time, so when the people want to apply for the telephone, fixed line te telephone from the operators, it was very expensive. I remember it was uh, 6,000 RMB, actually 600 pounds, to apply for a telephone number at that stage. And you know, at this moment, when you apply for the telephone, it will be free. If you sign 18 months contract, they give you a monthly package, then free of charge to set up, free of charge, very good uh, telephone set in your home. At that stage, uh, the setup fee w was 6,000 RMB, 600 pounds. Very expensive. To reflect to the profit, profit to the uh, major suppliers from Western countries, for example, Lucent and uh, Ericsson, their profit rate at that stage, we remember it was 500%, uh, the margin. It's a very, very good profit at that stage. So this is why the consumer need to pay 600 RMB, 6,000 RMB to install one. Uh, telephone numbers. So that's, I think, the competition situation uh, in China. Actually, Huawei and other Chinese companies, so we leverage our own development to lower the overall cost in China, to drive the business model into the reality. So actually, for China, in, in China at that time, each family, the annual income probably less than 6,000 RMB. They cannot afford 6,000 RMB for a telephone in their home. It's a very expensive. It's a probably for some family to have a telephone in home. It was their dream. So that, that, that was the situation. The Huawei, uh, we developed the solution and, uh, to lower the cost to address the customer requirement at that stage. Uh, just give some uh, examples. Because Huawei at that stage, we still focus on the rural area because the major cities and the uh, big cities, so they are still dominated by the fo foreigner companies like uh, uh, Ericsson and Lucent. And we work with the uh, uh, local authorities and local office to provide them the sl smaller volume communication switches and uh, the transmission systems to allow them to have the affordable solution in the rural area. At, at that stage, uh, the Huawei took a lot of uh, risk as well. The risk reflects two areas. One is the uh, financial risk. We need to share risk with the local authority. And also, the Huawei staff, at that stage, the working condition in the rural area were very poor. Even some areas, there were no transportation you can get there. So for some villages, you need to uh, hire the, uh, the carriage from the local, uh, local farm then to go to the site to install the equipment at that stage. So it's a, the condition, working condition, very poor. But Huawei, at that time, so all the staff work very hard to work with the local uh, authority, to work with the customer to commit uh, to deliver our commitment to address customer requirement. So this we call the uh, customer first, is one of our couch. And the number two at that stage, so we have a very different uh, capability from other companies. We call the uh, customerization. Because at that time, if the smaller operator want to buy the equipment from Western companies, if they have the requirement, so I cannot have the 200 lines rather than 10,000 lines, they will say no, because they have lots of business with the major cities. They have no idea, they have no, no time to deal with uh, this requirement. So Huawei will work with them to develop the customized solution for this area. So this is uh, uh, 
we call this customer first, customer customization, and also to manage the cost at that stage. So with the technical market rapid growth with Huawei's effort, so we achieved a very good result by the uh, 2000, the year of 2000. At that time, we have 1.9 billion US dollar revenue and with uh, uh, more than 17,000 staff by the end of 2000. The third stage we call it the, from China to the overseas. So we, we start develop the overseas market actually is uh, from the 1998. 1998. So we started our international business development. Uh, the reality was the first uh, purchase order from outside China is not 98. It's from after three years. So we got the first purchase order from Russia. The order, the number was $38. That's the first uh, purchase order for Huawei from the outside of China, the, the global market, the international market. So it took a uh, lot of years to develop the market, but uh, it's it worth. And, and you can see the chart uh, on the right hand. You can see the, the red part on the top. This is the revenue, proportion of the revenue from the international market. The blue part, there was a revenue from the domestic market from China. So you can see now the international revenue is more than the domestic revenue. So more than 68% of revenue is from the autos of China. So this is a, the company the strategy from 2000, year of 2000, started the overseas market development. Another factor in that stage, because uh, to develop the international market, it's not just because of uh, you have the product, that you have the, your team to be in that country. So how to transform your company from a Chinese company to an international company? And uh, later on, I will talk about from international company to a globalized company. So it's a different stage. So the first stage, the Chinese companies, so we will majorly work in China to work with the Chinese customer to provide the product to them. So it's, it's purely Chinese culture environment. Then second thing, we will sell a product uh, from China to different countries. So actually, it's still China-centric. So the management, the product, everything in China, we just have the sales team and the, probably some customer service team in the local countries. So the turning point for Huawei was uh, 2005 at this stage. So we signed the first uh, uh, global contract with the British Telecom in 2005. So you mentioned it's, uh, it was worth uh, 25 million US dollars in 2005. So for the British Telecom, they drive Huawei to improve our interna uh, internal management and also our international process very much from that year. So I will show you more details in the uh, next slides. So this is a very important stage, Huawei transformed from the Chinese company to an international company. And uh, from 2011, the company started a strategy from the international company to a globalized company. So there are lots of differences I will show you later. To summarize the, the fact to Huawei's success, so we can uh, summarize in uh, five areas. The number one will be, uh, we call it the customer-centric, so our corporate culture. Actually, probably you, you heard many times from all companies, they say we are the customer-centric company. Actually, from the feed feedback from our customers, the reality is Huawei is one of the best companies to fulfill this to fulfill the customer centric. Just give an example. So if in Huawei, where is the power? You, you know the, the company, if you want to make a decision, you will, the management need the, need the power. 
in lots of companies, the power will be in the headquarters, in the senior management, but in Huawei, the power is in the front line. So who is the closer to customer who has more power? For example, if you work in the account team, which every day you work with customer, you have the, you have the right to call company to respond to your requirement from front line to the headquarters. Even our founder, the CEO, uh, Mr. Ren, uh, in our lots of uh, annual meetings, uh, he, he told our team, so any sales, if you cannot drive the company to meet your customer requirements, you can kick my door to ask me to support you. So this is a company culture, the customer works. We work with customers to share our uh, vision with customers, to respond to customer requirements, to address customer challenge. This is number one for Huawei. The second will be, uh, we see, uh, I, as I mentioned, so the Chinese market and the international market, the technical market, rapid growth is definitely one of the reasons to give the Huawei have the opportunity to grow very quick. The third one will be our innovation. I will talk about more about the innovation. So Huawei's innovation is different from other companies. So we are we're not the uh, self-innovation. So we are the customer or, or oriented, customer-centric innovation. I will share more uh, with you how Huawei to do the innovation together with our customers. This, the fourth one with the management is very, very important. So the process, organization, and the management. How to manage the people, how to build the process, how to uh, improve the efficiency to allow the company can quickly respond to customer. Last one will be the, is very special one. It's Huawei is a private company. Internally, we have the uh, stock ownership program. So that means uh, most of employees own the company. So this is a very good way to share the risks, but it's a very good way to share the responsibility, to motivate the staff to contribute to the business. These are the five areas. I will explain more uh, one by one. The first one, as I mentioned, the culture. Huawei's co-culture, co we summarized in uh, six areas. Uh, it's very, very familiar. Customer first, I mentioned. And uh, dedication. Dedication. Dedication in Chinese, we, we call it fen dou. So now in Huawei, when you, when you say fen dou to the local staff, even in British, they understand what that means. So actually fen dou is a new word in Huawei. It means that, I think it's more than dedication. It's a, a contribution. Uh, work very hard, devote to the business. Uh, I think uh, the organization's objective is more than everything. So this is a uh, very complex concept. In Chinese, we call it Fen Dou. The third one will be the uh, improvement. So you can probably uh, realize that my topic is the Huawei story. Uh, the one of the, 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 the second part is the con uh, improvement never ends. It's the Huawei's culture. So we never see we have the best management, we have best uh, solution. So we, we will provide a much better one to our customer. Now we will improve our internal management uh, day by day. Openness and uh, initiative, that's very normal. So to, to share uh, the knowledge, to encourage people to open to your team, to customer, is very important. The transparency is very important. And the integrity is, is, is very, very important for all businesses. So you must uh, fulfill your commi commitment. You must uh, keep your commitment. And also to make sure your team will be work together. There are no any reason to have a discount. And teamwork. So Huawei is a company is uh, we don't rely on the individual. So uh, we, we accept that the individual will be very important because uh, people have a different uh, capability, different uh, uh, characters. 
but Huawei encourages the team. So even for the decision making, for example, so in Huawei UK or other, company, uh, or other countries, so I, I'm not the, the person to make the final decision. Even I, I'm the CEO of Huawei UK. So we have the management team. So the team will make, make the decision for, for the uh, organization, for the business decision, etc. So this is very important for Huawei. Everywhere we have the team to manage the business. So this is uh, to collectively to work together to maximize the knowledge and experience to make sure we have the uh, better solution to our problem. Innovation. When we talk about innovation, we will think automatically think is research and development. Uh, actually, you can see numbers here. I, I don't need to read these numbers. So how we actually uh, we invest in the R and D hugely. You can see twelve percent of revenue invest in the R and D. So for example, in the year before last year, we have three point seven six billion U.S. dollars invest on the R&D side. It's a very big investment, it's much more than other companies. It's the one, of the, one of the reasons why we have the power to drive the uh, solution uh, much more advanced than others. And also for the IPR and the patents. So you can see the numbers. Huawei actually in the, in, in the ICT industry we the number one contributor for the patents. We respect the IPR, and no, we don't need to pay any IPR to other companies. So we can equally exchange the IPR with most of the companies in the world. So we don't need to pay the IPR. Because we have the IPR, then we can exchange with the other companies if we enter into that market. And also for the standards, it's very important. So globally, uh, we joined uh, more than 130 standard uh, organizations. And also, we contribute more than 28,000 standard proposals in the industry. So this is the numbers that you can see. The last part I didn't mention is the R&D centers. So globally, we have 23 R&D centers in China, in USA, in UK, India, Sweden, Russia, France, etc. So uh, these centers we are uh, leveraging the local resource. For example. In America, we have the chipset architecture research center, so to focus on the uh, chipset design, because uh, in American there are lots of talents, so they are very good at this area. And in S Sweden, it's a radio technology. There's a lot of uh, expert in Sweden, so we set up the R&D center to attract them to work with Huawei. And the second part is the joint innovation center with customers. This is a very unique one in Huawei. So we focus on the innovation, not just uh, by Huawei, by Huawei's interest. So our R&D driven by the customer requirements. So for example, in global, we have already set up a 32 joint innovation center. So in just give an example, you can understand uh, what does the innova joint innovation center mean. We have the uh, joint innovation center with uh, Vodafone. Uh, in this center, Huawei has uh, 50 engineers, is expert technical engineers, and Vodafone have 50 engineers. So we work in the same building. And they have set up uh, a number of to subjects, topics. For example, in Vodafone, we have uh, one research is uh, how to reduce the power consumption. Because the telecommunication in the UK, just to share the number, so British Telecom actually is the number one power consumption in the UK. So how to reduce the power consumption is a big challenge for the operators. So our team jointly work with Vodafone team, and we, we have already worked out some solutions in the UK. For example, the mobile base station, in the past, whatever, how many the subscriber use this base station, the power will be full on, fully on. So, and uh, with our new technology, we have the software and the hardware, 
so we can judge on the subscribers, how many subscribers in this base station, near this base station, then we can switch off part of the base station. Because probably at that time, for example, in the midnight, no one used the base station. So we can power off this base station to save the power. And once some uh, traffic on, then automatically the power will be on by the software. So this is uh, one of the examples to show you the uh, power consumption uh, for the uh, joint innovation. Another one we, we have worked with the BT, British Telecom, because BT have different uh, challenge. BT don't have the mobile, they only have the uh, fixed telecommunication. They have the couple to each home. But as we know, the latest technology is the fiber to the home. But the BT doesn't have the fiber to the home. They only have the couple to the home. If you use the couple to the home, you only can achieve 20 meg bandwidth by the techno latest technology. If you use fiber, you can achieve more than one gig, one gig the bandwidth. That's very different. But to deploy the fiber to the home, it's very expensive. Uh, BT cannot afford that. If they deploy the fiber to each home, the, if they want to get a return back, make the even, it, it takes 50 years. The company will not invest. And uh, Huawei and the British Telecom, we set up the joint innovation lab in Ipswich in UK. The team is focused on how to use the COP to improve the bandwidth. So now we have two technologies. One is a, uh, we call the vectoring. It can allow the bandwidth through the couple from 20 meg to 80 meg. The next step, we have another technology in the lab, is we call the G.Fast, can allow the couple to support uh, 150 meg. And uh, within 100 meter, can even can achieve one gig. So this is a very good technology to help BT to save their investment. Then you can improve their customer experience without actual investment and uh, protect their existing uh, asset in the, in the market. So this is just give you an example. Huawei's innovation is not the, by Huawei it's interest, it's by customer interest to address customer commercial challenge. About process and management is a venture to the company, especially to the large company. If a company is small, probably you don't need the process. Because, uh, for example, you have a company within 100 people in the company, so you can have a meeting then to tell everyone uh, what's the direction, what's the plan, then we can go to action. But if you have the company, you have 150,000 staff working in the 100, more than 140 countries. So the process management is very, very important. Especially while we work in the high technology area, which you manage the knowledge rather than just manage the product line. So how to manage this one? So we have uh, started the process improvement from 1997. So we worked with, uh, uh, you, you can see, in, uh, in human resource area, which is Hague Group, in finance area with uh, uh, IBM, and also IT with IBM, and the quality control with uh, PHG, this is a German company, and uh, m and with the BCG. So we worked with uh, all the leading companies to help Huawei to improve our organization and process and also to enable our managers to know how to use a process to make sure the large corporate can uh, collectively to work together. So this is very important. For example, we have, in global, we have more than 1,000 customers in the technical sector. Each customer has their own requirements. How can you to capture these requirements? and to feedback to the research and development, and to develop the right version and response to this customer. This is very complicated. This, uh, you can see the top line, is the MIM, that means the marketing management. 
this is to manage the requirement. So this process will allow all the custom requirements will through this process. There is the evaluation to set up the priorities and to identify which version we can support you then to feedback to customer. And IPD is the integrated product development is to make sure all the components developed by different teams can be integrated and managed by the process. This is just give them an IIC for the supply chain logistics, etc., and CRM for the customer relationship management, etc. So this is a very important for the company to manage the business to satisfy our customers. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of the important uh, factors is, uh, uh, for Huawei to be successful is our stock ownership program. So uh, I'm not talking about the details. It's very easy to understand. From the beginning, our founder, Mr. Ren, he, he, he owned the company from the beginning. So you can imagine, he, he definitely he had a very big proportion of the stock at the company because he's, he's, was a, he's a founder. And you see, no, he only has 1.4% of the share in the company. Why? Because uh, each year, he shared his stock with the new staff and with some high performers to give them more chance to share the company's success. So this is very important. This is a very special way in China. So in China, there are probably very few companies like Huawei. So in China, this, by the end of 2011, we have more, nearly, you can see the number, more than 75,000 staff participate in this program. So this is a very important way to motivate the staff and to make sure the staff can take the responsibility because uh, the staff is part of the company, is, uh, is owner, is part of the owner's company. It's a very important way to uh, attract the talent to working uh, Huawei. You see, I think in UK, it's a similar model as John Lewis is a partnership program as well. So it's a similar one. From the international to the global, uh, logically, I think uh, there are very big differences between these two worlds. So international, as I mentioned, it means we sell our product from China. So everything in China, so development, uh, manufacture, and uh, logistics, all in China, <coughs> and purchase in China. Probably we purchase somewhere else from Taiwan, from America, but uh, we assemble the product in China, definitely. Then we distribute to different countries. This is the international. This, at this stage, the company challenge will be the how to set up the sales force in different countries, and how to build up the supply chain process from China to different countries. This is very important because uh, we sell the product because the customer requirement is not the number one. Is that we sell what we have at that stage. But the, the second issue, what we know is uh, we have already successfully transformed to the globalized company, uh, which means uh, we are not the China centric, it's global. For example, our management, not just in, in China. So our management is actually based on the 14 region. So the three region office have the very strong power to manage the business. And the, another part will be the research and deve development. As I mentioned, we have more than 23 research centers in global. So we will try our best to use the local talents, work with Huawei in the local. And the local logistics, and the local manufacture, and the local, uh, we call the purchase. So for example, in the UK, uh, last year, September 11th, so our founder, when he met uh, David Cameron in number, t uh, number 10, uh, we announced our uh, new investment plan for the next five years, which is uh, 2 billion US dollars, uh, 1 billion for the investment to build up the uh, centers of excellence, and uh, 1 billion for the pr 
purchased procurement. So we will locally purchase the components from China, uh, which includes the uh, services uh, or chipset or some software, etc. And the some purchased will assemble not in China, in our some center, for example, in, in Europe we have the center in Hungary. So we will ship some material to Hungary to assemble equipment then distribute it to the Europe. So this is a global business way. So not everything back to China then ship to uh, other countries again. So this is uh, just give an example. The challenge for the global company uh, will be the process I mentioned. Another one, the IT, the information technology infrastructure. So this is very important for Huawei. For example, we have the very big uh, IT infrastructure, which includes the connections. So each office, for example, the each countries to each country, we have the uh, dedicated connection to set up the video conference, to share the documents. And uh, each country office, we have the dedicated connection with the headquarters and the regional office to make sure we have the enable the process through the IT and the internal communication and the conference calls, etc. This is very important. Actually, you, even you work in different area, you can share your knowledge, share your information through the IT system very easy. This is a uh, challenge and also the managed platform is different from the international company. This is a globalization. The well, next step will be, as I mentioned to some of your researchers, uh, will be the localization. So Huawei, for example, in the UK, uh, our objectives will be to set up the localized decision-making team in the UK. Uh, we, we have already made a big step because at this moment uh, in Huawei in the UK, our top management, the 60% of our top management team is a local recruiting. So our solution director, our HR director, our finance director, uh, etc. Lots of directors, they are local recruiting. And the next step will be try to set up the local decision making team to make sure the Huawei in the UK is not a Chinese company, actually it's a Huawei in the British, is a British company uh, powered by Huawei technology. Is our next step. That's our uh, my presentation today. So welcome.